we just tore down our 5.3 engine to inspect a bunch of the internals. Everything looks really good, but we do have a few things we want to get. Before we get that and start putting it back together, we're going to paint the engine, starting with the valve covers. First, we want to remove everything that we do not want to paint, including the hardware, our gaskets, and the oil filler tube. Let's see if we can take it out. Next, we hit these valve covers with some brake cleaner to start breaking off that dirt and grime. I started breaking things apart with this brush, but it wasn't working, so we pulled out these Red Devil detailing and stripping brush set. It comes with two sets of stainless steel, brass, and nylon bristle brushes. We start off using the nylon bristle brush. Did great, pulling off a lot of the dirt and grime. Um, but we do eventually switch over to that brass one, and that one really did a great job. Really excited with the way it turned out and how well it took dirt and grime off this valve cover. Here we switch over to that brass brush, and you can see how it can really get in deep into those pores and get that dirt and grime out really making these valve covers look nice and ensuring that when we throw paint on this thing, it sticks to the aluminum and not to the dirt that falls off. And if you're having a tough time getting the dirt out of those cracks and crevices, I go around with just a screwdriver, getting all the big chunks of dirt out that I couldn't get with the brush. And here's what it looks like at the end. I was pretty excited with the way it turned out. Uh, we got our scotch right here to scuff up the surface, acetone to clean everything off, our paint, and some tape to cover up all the surfaces we don't want paint on. And don't forget some gloves because once we get the surfaces cleaned up, we don't want to get the oils from our hands on any of the painting surfaces. Next, let's dab some of that acetone on a clean rag and start cleaning off our part. I really like acetone because it's able to clean our part and remove those oils that we don't want on our part, and it evaporates really quickly. Next, I put tape on all the surfaces we don't want paint on, and using a wrench, I rub the corners at a 45 degree angle, which breaks the tape and allows me to peel it off, keeping the tape right where we want it. It's finally time to start painting. We have this VHT Wrinkle Plus paint and don't forget a good respirator to keep those fumes out of your lungs. Shake your paint can about a minute vigorously before you paint and on this first coat we're going to go in a vertical direction laying on a thick layer of paint. The next coat, you're supposed to go perpendicular to the first coat you just put on. I happen to go 45 degrees, and on my last coat, I did perpendicular to the first coat. I'd always recommend following the directions to a T, but in this case, I don't think it was that big of a deal, and everything turned out just fine. If you made it this far in the video, you might as well click that like and subscribe button. And here's our final coat going perpendicular to our first coat that we laid on. Top edges don't quite have the same wrinkle consistency as the rest of the part. That's probably just the way I painted it and something I can improve on next time I use this Wrinkle Plus paint. However, look at this wrinkle. It looks awesome, it's pretty consistent, and I'm very happy with the way this turned out. If you want to see what project these parts are going into, you can click that dodgeball playlist in the upper left. And I'm going to give you one more chance to help this video get in front of the right people by clicking that like and subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time on the Roy Garage.